Researchers and entrepreneurs are putting huge efforts to give eyes to machines, such as cars, robots, or even drones. Yet, this effort is invested to put the human aspect in the center of our innovation. Today, I'm going to talk about a specific field of artificial intelligence, which is computer vision, and how it can enhance our human connection. But first, let me tell you the story of my friend, Wendy. Wendy lost her sight six years ago from a brain injury, and she's not able to see anymore. And what intrigued me in her story, not her way of survival, she is good in it, but the way she misses the simplest form of human connection, such as recognizing a face or seeing a smile. Wendy is among many others who are living with visual impairment. As we speak, one person each five seconds was blind. And it's worth mentioning that there are more than 285 million visually impaired persons worldwide. This is huge. So we kept working with Wendy, among others, with similar condition, trying to design a solution that can help, that can improve the quality of life. But before I show you this solution, may I ask you all to close your eyes for a moment, please. Just for a moment, try to imagine life as Wendy sees it. Please keep your eyes closed. Imagine you just got out of your home. And remember, you see nothing. You can smell the fresh air of the morning. And you started to feel a little bit cold in your face. Suddenly, you started to hear the footsteps of someone moving towards you. You have no idea who he or she might be. The person is coming closer, but still isn't close enough to talk to. You might start to feel curious, who is this person? Or somehow scared, is this person going to hit me? You may open your eyes, please. Now imagine you have this. You point and ask, who is that? I see Ahmed in front of you and I see smile. This was Isense speaking, a new personal companion for the blind to pursue a joyful life with more independence. So now Wendy can speak to Isense and teach about her family and friends. And she can speak in a very natural way, saying something, what do you see? Where are my keys? Read text for me. Having such a solution is such a first step in a longer way. It's obvious that a blind person needs support from computer vision. But what about sighted people? As humans, we are curious to see what we cannot see. We invented from the microscope to see the small things, to the telescope to see the far things. And our eyes are designed to see a very narrow view from the real world. This is only what we can see. And if we compare our, bird, our vision to bird, for example, we'll see as that our eyes are really primitive devices. Birds can see much more color than us. They can see the ultraviolet and the magnetic field. They can see a clear field of view because we have a little dot in our eyes called the fovea. We see only point of high definition and the other is blurred. Let's try something. Can any of us spot the bird in this picture? May you raise your hand? Nice, some of us. The bird is here. 
This was just a funny example. But what if it's a really dangerous situation? And do we need to spot this danger in a fraction of a second? Because we have a tiger here. This scenario might not be possible yet with the current state of AI. But as soon as we compensate vision for the blind, we will be able to have a richer vision that can go beyond our physical capabilities. This was for vision. But where else AI and computer vision could help? I will tell you another story. When I was 10 years old, it was my first time to see the picture of my grandfather on the cover of Los Angeles Times. To the world, he was an inventor. But for me, he was my hero. As a child, I was inspired by him and what he's bringing to life. He was my best friend. And when my father died and he moved to live with us, his friendship became even closer. Four years later, he started to forget. And my grandfather was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Imagine how painful it felt when he cannot recognize my face or struggles to remember my name. Later, I started to question myself. Are we our memories? And what happened when we lose this association with beloved one? Moments of joy, love, or even frustration, and we cannot recall them anymore. Half of us will suffer from memory loss as a normal part of aging. For the last couple of years, I was thrilled to work with a specialist in memory diseases, trying to focus on designing solutions that can help cope with life while forgetting. And here is what we found. When a person forgot the name of an object, and this in some cases of, of aphasia, so a recognition, simple recognition, can help to retrieve the world, something like this. Think. And in some cases of Alzheimer's, when a person forgets the use of a certain object, adding a description like this could help. Coffee machine. Would you like to know how to use it? And also, shopping list could be fun. Remember, buy milk and cheese. These solutions can run on phones or on a special wearables. But what about severe cases when the person cannot use any kind of devices anymore? In that case, the solution is installed in their houses, learns about their daily life routine. So imagine a person struggles in his kitchen one afternoon, so the solution can simply detect him and tell. Good afternoon. This is the lunch time. Shall I display a video of how to prepare your favorite Spanish omelet? This is the medication you need to take before. You can also show it to me to confirm that it's the right one. And if you want me to play your favorite music, please say, play music. This was for memory diseases. But where is the fine line between memory diseases and normal forgetting? We are living in a very fast moving and noisy world around us, and we tend to forget. And we don't want to forget, especially moments that matter to us. So some of us will say we take pictures from our devices to save some moments. It's not working. I will tell you why. The more pictures we are taking from our devices, most likely will not get back to scroll them again. These pictures are not associated with emotions. These pictures are out of context, just marked by place or date, which is not the real context. So it must be another solution to save moments that matter to us. Now imagine if we can, if we can extend our memory and link it to the outside physical world. So we can simply scan an object, and it can remind us by its it's a story. A gift from my wife, Lisa, Amsterdam, summer 2010. Imagine if we can save special moments, link this moment to a person or to an object, add our emotions.
linked to a special event, put them into a context. This is Adam, my nephew, who came to life six weeks ago. And this was my first meeting with him. Now, I just created a, memory, a new memory line with Adam. And in the future, I will be able to recall this moment linked to Adam or to my joy or love emotions. I can even hear her first, his first cry or his first laugh with me. And with the help of the same technology, a person like my grandfather will not confuse names of his beloved ones. And he will not struggle to prepare his favorite Spanish omelet. And Wendy can explore life in a new, different way. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate to witness a new era of emerging technologies. And if we start using these technologies to help people with their vision and memory, we all will benefit. And we will have a richer vision and an extended memory. To end this talk, when you put the human aspect, not only machines, in the center of our innovation, we will enjoy a much better human connection with ourselves and with others. And we will be able to score another victory for the humanity. Thank you.